Assalamu alaikum, I'm Amin. I've been running a business online for about six, seven years now. And one of the things that I do is help people to make an income online. I've learned how to do it. I've helped other businesses grow their business. And now I help people do that. So when Ali Dawa made this clip, this is nonsense. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no right. Whatever you're doing, you're driving a Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, or whatever it may be, there is nothing wrong with the nine to five. That sounds a bit like he's criticizing someone like me. I thought I have to set the record straight. So what I'm going to do is go through what he said, and I'm going to break it down bit by bit and explain the little nuance, the little detail here of what makes him right sometimes, but also him very wrong sometimes. So no offense to Ali Dawa, this is just to correct something he said, which I think most people are going to take the wrong way. So let's get into it. I am fed up of those who are making people who are working 9 to 5, wherever they are, feel like crap. So first he mentions this concept of making people feel bad because they have a 9 to 5 job. And the truth is that if I want to sell something that helps people leave their 9 to 5, I don't need to make them feel bad. They already feel bad. This sounds a bit naive coming from Ali, someone who lives in London. He mixes it with average people. Unlike myself, I'm a bit removed from the average world, if you like. Most people do not like their job. Not because they have to work hard. Most Muslims, alhamdulillah, they understand, yeah, I have to work hard, that's fine. But the problem is the commuting. The problem is mixing with people who don't follow their values. They don't want to be caught in the office, putting their foot in the sink, having wudu. They don't want to have to mix with women. They don't want to spend most of their waking hours working to just make money, to just survive. They know there's more to life than that. And that's why I don't need to make them feel bad. They already feel bad about their job. This is not something that I, at least as a marketer, aim to make people feel bad about. They already feel bad. And that's why they're very interested in alternatives out there. This is nonsense. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no right. Whatever you're doing, you're driving a Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, or whatever it may be, there is nothing wrong with the nine to five. Stop making your brothers and sisters, or non-Muslims, whoever it may be for that matter, feel like rubbish. And then he says, there is nothing wrong with working the nine to five. And I agree with him. There's nothing wrong in principle. In general, there's nothing wrong with it. It's good. Work hard, get a job, whatever it is you need to make a halal income. That's the first criteria we have for income. That's a good first stage. For me, I would say that's the minimum to have a halal income. But what are the levels above that? Do we not think for what's above that? An income that is halal, but also it gives you some sort of fulfillment. You feel like I'm getting a good challenge out of this, or I'm impacting the world in a good way, or I'm working for a company that provides a good service to people. I'm actually helping to make the world a bit of a better place. Or you might say this income allows me to have flexibility so I could work from home and pray in the masjid, or I could work from a Muslim country. I don't have to live amongst people who don't maybe share my values. These are levels above just halal. And that's why people actually want to leave their job. So halal is the base level, but there are levels above that, Ali. And I'm sure you understand that as a very basic concept. People don't like their jobs, not because they don't want to work hard, but because of these other issues they face. There is nothing wrong. As Muslims, if your intentions are right, there is nothing wrong with working 9 to 5. I used to work a 9 to 5. I've done Uber. I've done other works. I yes, generally, there's nothing wrong with working 9 to 5. But there is a problem with compromising your values day in, day out. There is a problem with wasting 10 hours of your waking hours on just trying to make a living. If you can avoid that, it's good to avoid that. If you can avoid mixing with the opposite gender, it's good to avoid that. If you can avoid mixing with people who are going to influence your heart in a bad way, then that's good to avoid that. There are levels. I am proud of earning a halal income for my family. And there were times where I worked and I was investing in commodities and I was making very good money. However, I'm not money motivated. Whoever knows me knows me. And then he says he's proud that he's working hard and that's fine. But wouldn't you be more proud if you're working in a job or in a business that made you more money? to do more stuff for your family and for the community that made you more fulfilled and allowed you to have more impact and that didn't require so much of your time or wasting time going to a specific office that takes you an hour there and an hour back and you're like falling asleep on the tube wouldn't you be more proud of that than the basic just halal job level i carry try to carry money in my hand not in my heart and then ali goes on to say that i'm not money motivated and that's a very general statement but what I feel like he's trying to do and what I think the viewer would take from that is that he's talking about a lot of negative stuff and he says, I'm not money motivated. As though a money is something that's bad to be motivated for. It's bad to be motivated for money for the sake of it. 
But if you have a specific goal in mind, that's not based on arrogance. It's not based on showing off. It's not based on just boosting your ego. It's based on providing better for your family. It's based on offering a good service to people to actually help solve their problems. In that case, being money motivated actually becomes a good thing. And we wouldn't call it being money motivated, but we would say you're motivated to have higher standards and to do something better with your time. The important thing is what? That you earn a halal income for your family. There were times I would do Uber and sleep in the back of the car because coming home was an hour away and I was gonna fall asleep on the wheel. And then he goes on to talk about falling asleep in the Uber and how it was so hard and tiring as though working a hard job is better than working what seems to be an easier job. In fact, maybe Allah will purify you of some of your sins for the hardship you're going through for a good purpose. But there is also hardship in starting a business. I would say, undoubtedly, it's harder to start a business than to drive Uber. So if that's the way that we're judging whether some source of income is good or bad, then it's better to start a business because it's harder, if that's the judge. But I wouldn't go for the judge. What I would say is, if we're aiming for something high, we have a good intention. We're trying to do something which is larger than just halal base level. We're trying to do something bigger. So just because you're working hard, that alone doesn't make it good. Halal is base level. Working hard is also base level category. But then what are we trying to aim beyond that? So don't let these influencers, whoever they may be, you know, or these uh, bosses or whatever, like, you know, they live this specific lifestyle, good for you. But stop making people feel like crap. There is nothing wrong with the 95. May Allah bless everyone that works in 95. Then he makes a comment on people who live a certain lifestyle. And I actually agree with him on this in terms of the people that are going out and promoting their way of making more money or having a, a more flexible way of making money. If those people are purely promoting a materialistic outcomes of that. Purely the cars, access to women, which, you know, is not that Islamic, but sometimes it's uh, slipped in there. Just going on all these holidays as though that is the purpose of life. Then I don't think that should be a core part of your marketing and the way that you promote the outcome that you're going to get. I think what we do is much more tasteful and it's much more linked to a Muslim's goal in life, which is about helping your family more, spending more time with your family, having the flexibility to work with and in an environment with people who share your values, being able to go to Juma without feeling stress over, am I going to pass my lunch break or not? All of these things is what we promote. And I think that's much more in line with what a Muslim would want from this more flexible get out of the nine to five kind of lifestyle. I agree, we shouldn't be pushing that materialistic stuff to the front because it's not our main goal. Although it's not sinful to enjoy some of these things, but they shouldn't be the core part of our marketing. So I agree with Ali on this one. Now there are people, if you want to, if you say, you know, I want to work my way up, etc., good, but stop making, feel, making people feel like rubbish. Please, this is arrogant. And then he admits at the end that there are some people that can help you to get out of your nine to five or to work your way up, as he says, and that that's fine. But he said they shouldn't be making you feel bad. And I agree. But as we already said, 80% of people already feel bad. They don't need to be made to feel worse. But I'll tell you one thing, and this is quite a deep marketing concept. People who feel bad often won't take action to solve their problem. And if this is a big problem, sometimes they won't even try to solve it or sometimes they feel hopeless. What we have to do in business is we have to remind them of the pain that they already feel. They're already feeling this pain. We're just rekindling that flame and we're reminding them of how they're fed up of their situation. And for me, that's completely ethical. They're already feeling that pain. We're just reminding them. And then if they want the solution, they can go for it. But to try to make them feel a pain that they don't have, okay, yeah, that would be unethical. That would be wrong. But I don't think most people are doing that. They're just trying to reawaken that pain that you already had. So yeah, that's my take on what Ali said. I agreed with some of it, but most of it I feel is being very general and not looking deep into the situation that most people do want to leave their jobs. They don't like their jobs. And the path for them may be to get a job that is better and more suited to their values. That's fine. But also their solution might be to start a business and get out of the nine to five, as we say. In either way, we're trying to help people solve their real problems. And I'm not just making this video because it's something I'm involved with as a business. I'm making this because we shouldn't stand for these low standards of I've got a bad job and I mix with bad people and I have to spend an hour there, an hour back, and I have to be there eight hours a day. And I'm too tired when I get home to help my family and to teach my kids and raise my kids. I have all these problems. But no, it's a halal income and it's fine. Oh, and I sleep in the back of my Uber because it's so hard and that's such a good thing. And that's what I really disagree with fundamentally. We should have higher standards. And of course, because we have these pains, we shouldn't get tricked into a solution that's not a real solution. We should be critical thinkers. But ultimately, we have this problem. And so if you're trying to solve that problem, then that's a great thing. May Allah bless you. 
And with that, I will say, Assalamu alaikum. If you're interested in anything I do, then maybe you could check the description. But otherwise, have a good day. On the edge of the fire, love is so